Today we are going to turn this historic or nearly prehistoric iPad 1 into an external monitor which I will use in a different project which will turn a prehistoric mobile computer in a kind of a suitcase design into a portable Amiga or C64. I'm not yet decided on that. So this is an old iPad 1 which I had from day one pretty much and the battery died and I could simply s switch out the battery but there's no point in that because iOS is not longer supported on this device and so it's pretty much nothing more than just a brick with a nice display. And I thought, hmm, well, actually this is a pretty nice display, so why not turn this into an external monitor or a replacement monitor for a mobile computer that I have sitting in storage. And to do this, you have to open the iPad up, which I have already done, as you may see, this is a bit uh, scratched over here. And we'll have a look inside this iPad and I will show you how to turn this into an external monitor. So first you have to cut with a knife around the edges of the iPad where the black line is as some kind of rubber seal which you have to break and then there are these plastic tabs which hold the top containing the um, display and the touch um, device inside the metal or aluminum shell. And I did that already and it's quite a lot of prying. You have to be very careful not to break the glass or the display. And once you have done that, you cannot simply lift all this up because here are quite some cables attached to the motherboard, which I've already loosened. I see this is plugged in over here. Down here are some. And if you do that, you can simply detach the computer or iPad device from the display. And I guess we should have a look inside the iPad. So over here, and this is what takes most of the iPad, is um, the battery, which in this case is completely dried or died out. And the good thing is for the monitor to work we don't need any of these components. This here is pure fun disassembling an iPad. Okay I guess we've done enough destruction to this. Let me just clean this up a little and we get back to the main attraction, the screen. So if you turn the screen over you can see a few things. This I guess is some kind of Wi-Fi antenna which runs around the screen. Um, you have this over here, which I guess, I don't remember if this thing has a camera. I guess it's, it's just a light sensor because it's an iPad 1, um, which t it turns the screen brightness up and down. So this is this. Um, this is the touch assembly, so that touch surface above the screen. And to connect the screen itself and the backlight, you have this little port connector which con contains um, a little cable which I already took out. Let me just open this up. And I was a bit nervous about that because I didn't know if I would be able to get something called a driver board to drive this, this whole display. So you can see this a very fiddly connectors which go in right here and there was just a little sticker over there to keep it in place. And I wasn't even sure if the display worked because I gave this device to someone else, to my mother, and um, she returned it to me at some point and said it doesn't work anymore. And I just assumed that the battery had died. So. That's an interesting point of checking if this really is working. 
or if we just have a dead display. I don't know. I, I assume it's, uh, it's a battery. So to get this working, we need one thing and that is to know which display this one here is. And I guess all the iPad ones um, do have an LP097X02 SLD6. That's the serial, no, not the serial number, the product number of this display. And if you know the display number, you can go on eBay or Amazon or your favorite uh, display board assembly delivery guy and order a board that replaces all the driving mechanisms mechanisms inside the iPad itself. And that is just what I got here. So this is a driver board. And the main attraction is this whole assembly, which does provide a connector, which is exactly the same connector, hope, uh, thankfully, that came with the original iPad. So this is plugged in here. And you have this board with an uh, open interface. I don't know what this is for. And you get attached a, a board with some buttons for source selection, menu, power on off, and a um, power indicator. And all you have to do is two things. First, you have to connect this connector to this connector down here. And it's a bit tricky because it's very flat and the, the cables are very, very thin and very, very fiddly. So I will definitely provide some sticker for now to keep this in place. And you have to provide some kind of power source. And this power source does have to be 12 volts and it's center positive. You can plug it in here or you can plug it in here. And there's a description on the back side which tells you exactly which pin is which. And we have two grounds, two 12 volts, and I'm going to use a middle ground and 12 volts. And I have this power supply here, it's some generic power supply where you can uh, set the um, voltages and I set it to 12 volts and on the other end because I didn't want to um, destroy this port and the connector was cut off already from this cable so I just soldered this small connector on here and this fits perfectly on the middle two connectors on this board which provides this with 12 volts. Don't be irritated. Uh, the cable color is exactly wrong. Should be red here and black on the ground, but it's not. And if we plug in, let's just turn this around. This whole thing. You can see this comes to life and it says no signal, which is pretty neat. And which better way to test if this genuinely, work, genuinely works or not than plugging in a C64, a mini that is, with an HDMI connection. And this board provides both HDMI um, VGA and I guess this is composite video. I'm not quite sure. So here's the HDMI cable which goes into the C64 Mini. And I have power connection right here. Like this. Oh, already came on. And I have the HDMI connection which goes in here. And bam, got a perfectly working external display. I guess this does 1024 by 9, 
68 or something resolution wise and yeah that's pretty much all there is to it you can get an ipad one with a working screen for about 15 to 20 dollars or euros on ebay the display port is uh, display board is 15 euros plus shipping from china which is i guess three euros or dollars depending on where you come from so for about 30 to 40 bucks you get a really really nice bright display and the reason why I came up with this project is um, first I wanted to um, buy a 10 inch display to put into that suitcase computer that I'm gonna turn into an Amiga or a C64 and when I was looking on eBay and Amazon they actually charged about 100 to 120 plus shipping for these devices and I thought hey that's too much money so maybe I can repurpose something I already have in my uh, bin of lost technology and voila turn the iPad into a display and next step I'm gonna turn this off would be to unscrew the display which is here from this whole assembly to make it even smaller you can see the display itself is just this and there's a lot of frame and I will put this in a new frame and put this frame inside of this suitcase computer so that is going to happen next and yeah that's pretty much it for today thanks for watching and I will put links to this driver board and the correct description of this driver board, the serial, serial no, not sorry, the model number in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye bye. So please like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And until next time. Bye bye.